All right. Hello, and welcome back to the Futurism at Jeju podcast. Uh, my name is Nicholas. I'm joined with co-host Ricardo. What's up? And uh, today's topic is uh, boring innovation. So might might sound like a little bit of a misnomer there. Misnomer, catch twenty two, because you think you know innovation, exciting, boring. You don't normally, you know, uh, associate with innovation. But yeah. basically, what boring innovation is is those things that you know are just continually happening in the background. Um, one thing we're going to talk about is like Apple and their continuous you know updates and software updates and, and revisions revisions to, tech. to the their tech and their phones and stuff like that. Um, but those are things that are not necessarily like earth shattering innovations. Like, you know, when we think about like chat GBT, yeah, that was a very disruptive, very exciting innovation that would definitely not be considered a boring innovation. But for example, you know, the slight improvement of Apple's iPhone from maybe the 14 to the 15, assuming that's not like, I'm assuming that's not, that wasn't like a crazy big change. It was, it really wasn't. Um, yeah. That would be considered like a boring innovation where, you know, they're innovating, they're getting better, but it's not by like a huge margin that every know, has time a huge yeah. um, impact, you know, worldwide. Um, so I kind of wanted to open it up to you of like, okay, you yeah. know, what, what would you say um, maybe talking about Apple or another talking company? Yeah. Um, what would you say are kind of like the top kind of boring innovations for people to think about? Uh, I think for me, especially like as of recently, I think it would be phones in general. Like there's a lot of phone makers out there. Uh, I'm not necessarily singling out Apple. I think Apple's the, biggest example just because everybody uses apple devices and they're so well known uh and again because apple is kind of known as that like usually as the pioneer slash company that always comes out with something new and they're always exciting which lately hasn't necessarily been the case but yeah phones i think in general just have been kind of boring lately we have had phones that are folding which i personally think are like the next biggest thing um because you get like either a bigger screen in the same size as a regular phone or the same regular phone in like half the space where you have like the clam uh opening of like you know do you know the the razor flip phone like those old phones uh, yeah I used, that was my flip first phones. phone was a flip phone so like that same format but with a you know like a touch screen phone that is all screen so i personally think those are pretty cool and there's always stuff being done there like uh serial improvements which i think are really good but again like most phones that you look at it are not that interesting like they're all kind of the same as long as you get a phone that is good enough like you're saying you don't really have to think about it sure the cameras change once in a while uh maybe they have some slight new gimmick that makes them kind of worthwhile but we often nowadays don't see anything that's like super cool or innovative like back when samsung they made a phone that was literally a phone with a with a, an actual, like, zoom lens attached to the back. Like, one of those old cameras. Like, you know those point-and-shoot cameras? Yeah. So, it would have, like, the, the lens of that in the back of the phone. I've seen... Have you seen those um, people have those, like, things that you can, like, attach to the front of the phone? To the front of the like, back? To, oh, sorry, to the camera. Oh, yeah, those are just, like, like, lenses. Those, those are just lenses. Yeah, those are just, like... yeah. Is that what you're talking about? No, talking no, 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 no. It's something different. Oh. So what it was is, you know how... Do you know, like, point-and-shoot cameras? Point-and-shoot like, cameras. So, like, the ones that you would turn on, and they had this lens that is rec- retractable, and it made a little sound like... Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I had one of those. Yeah. I think it was a... Like, what, what are what are common brands of those? Canon. Canon, yeah. Sony. Canon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So those type... So you you know the mechanism, right? Like that whole like little camera mechanism that goes. Yeah, zzz. yeah. It goes they back basically had one of those in the back of a Samsung, and that was like really? the back camera. Yeah, that's so interesting. Exactly. Why did that? Is that still a thing? No, <laughs> obviously not. Whoa, that would have been so cool. It was when it I came mean, out. I mean, it's a bit, it's a bit um, excessive. It, yeah, but it was but cool. I think that's so cool. Exactly. That's or, definitely not. I would not consider that a boring innovation. Though. Exactly. No, no, no. That's, that's like very that's innovative. What, that's what I'm getting at. So back in the day we had these types of various innovations that were really cool, really impressive, and just out and wild, which I personally really enjoyed. Uh, there was also another phone, I think by Samsung or maybe another maker, maybe HTC, something like that, where you would take a picture and it was basically like a 3D image instead of just like a regular photo that was 2D. So the the whole point of that is the phone came with a screen that was like a 3D screen. So, you know, like when TVs, came out and they were like, oh my God, we have this new TV that's like 3D. And everybody was so enthralled by like 3D 
um, in video. And so they came up with that technology in a phone and they were like, what, what a better way to test it out than to allow the camera. They basically, I think it was one of the first few like multi-camera systems on a phone that would take various pictures and sort of construct this 3D image from a picture that you took so that you could view it in 3D from that same screen on the phone, which was cool because if you sent it to another person that had a 3D phone, they could also see the image in 3D, which was pretty cool, but like nobody bought the phone. So like, what was the point? Yeah. The technology itself and the idea was pretty freaking cool, but the fact that the adoption was so low kind of killed that type of innovation. And then again, 3D is kind of nauseating and distracting. Yeah, that that, that kind of made me think of like timing and adoption innovation because yeah. I feel like there there have been so many very interesting and like potentially very useful ideas, like innovations out there that have just like not been adopted by people either by, you know, it's bad timing. Maybe it was like a too ahead of the time mm-hmm. or it was too expensive or like whatever other reason that or maybe it was poor marketing. You know, you just you had the great idea, but you didn't like market it well to people like apple's known for very good marketing yeah um and that's why part of why they've been so successful um but like how much do you think that like timing and like marketing play into you know innovation like for one one example i immediately think of is like um what was it called the google google lens google lens right yeah like that was a huge hype for like a little bit and then it just kind of died off it never was really adopted i mean it like was adopted mainstream. but it was adopted by like businesses who had That's like what I'm another saying. use it wasn't adopted but yeah. like consumers yeah, yeah it wasn't it wasn't a wide adoption and i think a problem was definitely like a, it was an effect of the times like you were saying and another reason for it is just like the hardware that's available at the, at the time so for example if i want to make if right now i want to make a a second me right i want to make a chat gpt me that does all the tasks that I don't want to do and thinks exactly like me. If I want to do it now and try to adopt it and sell it as like, oh, you can make yourself, but in chat GPT and make it do the tasks that you don't want to do. Chat, like AI is at a good point, but it's not at the greatest point. So it's not going to sell very well because there's some limiting factors in there. Like the idea is good and the idea is there, but there are limiting factors that wouldn't allow it to be marketable to most people. Maybe there's some fringe scenarios where it might still be cool. But if you take a few years, maybe five years in the future, even 10 years, which in technology terms, that's like way, way in the future. um, Maybe we're at the point of technology now where the idea is now feasible, right? So I think there's a thing where people aren't ready for it and they're in their heads, they're not ready for that type of technology, so they don't adopt it. And another thing is the idea is really good, but the hardware to implement it, like the materials to implement it aren't, aren't there yet. So you can't get a good representation of what you really want to do. So with like the Google Lens, the hardware was okay. But again, the chips that they were using were kind of slow. AR wasn't that big. So there weren't very little applications that could reliably use AR. But now as we're moving forward and everybody's doing VR or AR to some degree, now if Google is doing another version or revision to their Google Lens, now they have all these resources to pull from. Now they have all this technology from VR and AR that's been currently developing. Now they have the new recent chips, right? They have the latest hardware, they have the latest in battery life. So now they can make a good product from the original idea. So I definitely think there's some people aren't ready for it scenarios. And then there's the world doesn't have the materials to make this a good reality or like a good product. But do you think consumers would actually adopt Google Lens, if it oh, like came for back. Oh, for sure. You think so? I think so. I think that the biggest thing to Would adoption, you? in my opinion, ha- yeah. Really? Yeah. What, like, what, what kind of, like, practical use would it have for Directions. You? Directions? If I was walking, mm-hmm. and I needed to go somewhere, and if I could send directions to my Google Lens, or literally tell it, hey, I want to go this place, but I don't know where it is. Can you, like, I'm, I'm going to be walking, or I'm going to be biking. Can you, on the Google Lens, give me, like, a little uh, HUD like a heads-up display to show me where I should go. Actually, biking, that's a good one. Biking, or, or driving, snowboarding, anything snowboarding. where you're not actively using your, your hands, where you can't actively be using your hands. I mean, And you have to pay attention to the road. I think even walking would be useful because, yeah. like, right now, you have to, like, look down at your phone 
and that poses a risk because you're not paying attention to what's yeah. around you. So, like, if you just have it on your glasses or whatever. Yeah, and you have, like, a little display or a little uh, arrow telling you, like, where what uh, way you should head. Yeah. That's huge. Then you're able to keep looking at forward, but at least, yeah. like, you're being like, directed as you go. Like, imagine if, like, everybody, and I'm saying this like a first-year mentor, imagine if all the freshmen had this upon getting to school, and so now they could just tell their Google Lens, hey, my FYM told me to, like, meet them at Gilman Hall. So, like, Google Lens, point to Gilman Hall. <laughs> Oh, but that that I feel like that would just make people lazy though. No, it wouldn't. Like part of the, I feel like part of the fun, like the first week or two. Okay, it's not fun for me. Was trying to find stuff. It's not fun for me when I'm trying to find people <laughs> and making sure that they're going to meetings that they have to go to. But like I feel like after a couple weeks, people pretty much know what. Yeah, stuff but orientation is. is just one week. That's true. I need them to be places so that I can get my job done. But you, what you could also do is, like, share a location. I did that, and they still got lost. They still got lost? They still got lost. Okay. I had one person well, that I told them to meet me in front of, like, the Blue Jay statue or Gilman or something. They ended up at, like, behind Gilman in, like, the greenhouse or something. <laughs> or one time, I told someone to meet me somewhere that was on the other side of campus, and they ended up in front of the glass pavilion. I have no idea what they did. I literally shared a Google Maps link. I don't know, bro. Okay. I don't well, know. they need Google, they need Google Lens. They really clearly. need Google Lens. But like, Google Lens would probably use like Google Maps, right? So yeah. So if you can't use Google Maps, that's okay. You're not wrong. You don't know. What but I mean. you know, it's a little more direct. That's true. They have to fiddle with it less. But that's okay. what I mean. It's like, I think the easier you make it adoptable, the more people that will adopt it. And that comes with like pricing, and that comes with comfort, and that comes with making it as less strenuous on the body as possible like if you have obviously same thing with vr like if you have this gigantic headset and if it's hard to carry and there's no much battery life and it's kind of clunky nobody's going to use it but if you make it really small if you make it really light uh if you make it fashionable maybe uh and you make it cheap who isn't going to want to buy it and you get this all this added functionality to it yeah that reminds me of um um meta's new or whatever facebook's new um, oculus like the oculus 3 no no not the oculus well oh. oculus 2 but i was thinking of the um the ray-ban collaboration oh we saw how cool, they yeah. they had like the i forget what it, exactly it was yeah, it was yeah. something like they collaborated with ray-ban for like these really cool it's like an ai slash like glasses and camera combination yeah it almost it almost seemed like a google lens kind of thing it it, it kind of is integrating a you know, technology into the sunglasses. It kind of is like a Google lens, but the only difference is you're not getting anything new on the lenses. So like nothing is being displayed to you. You're just listening to it. So if you tell, Oh, is it purely audio? It's purely audio. And then oh. it has cameras so that you can tell it to like record stuff for you. Oh, so there is camera. It has a camera. Functionality. Okay. Yeah. But like you ha have your camera and let's say like you're watching, I don't know your kids or maybe you're like at a family reunion and you want to take a video real quick. You can tell it hey, record and then it'll record. Uh, and well, that's that, it. That raises some issues. Okay, but some like privacy okay, issues. Okay. Assuming there is no privacy issues, it's pretty cool, and it makes it very seam seamless because now you don't have to take your phone out, kind of break away from the moment, to go and start again. Again, so you, we're you not literally just like talk out loud and you say like, record. "Glasses record" or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Instead of having to like, I don't know. instead of having to be like, "Oh yeah, let me take my phone out. Let me not make eye contact with you. Let me just like." But that's good because then you know people are recording. Yeah, you. but it's your like family members, and then again, you're you're still listening. Well, you could to do them it whenever. Say record, so it's not like they are not gonna notice. But like, depending on how sensitive it is, if you just go like, you know, like really really soft okay. and just say it, you know. Okay. I I personally think that raises some there big privacy okay, issues. If somebody wanted to record in private, there are still ways for somebody being like, "Oh, I'm just checking my notifications," and then quietly turning the camera on. I mean, sure, but like you just made it way easier. But like with the, with I don't the think, sunglasses. Okay, I personally don't think it's that huge of a concern. Personally. Okay, agree to disagree. Really? I I think okay. it's a big issue. Like I I think I told you this. I used to have okay. these like spy glasses. Glasses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you you could see the camera. Like it was pretty obvious. Oh no! On the Ravens, you can still see the camera. Like the there's still the like you can see the outline of the little lenses on the on the sides of the of the glasses. But like, do you know when someone is recording? no with that that's the issue like if there's like okay fine if there's like a red light or something no there's not a red light because then that would make it annoying <sighs> but then at least people know 
okay, but okay, I, again. I, okay. I think it's an issue. <laughs> okay. But we'll, okay. We'll agree to disagree on that part. Yeah. Anyways, I think it's cool if okay. I I definitely get the security concern though. Uh huh. Like from Facebook's perspective, like I wouldn't necessarily trust him with all my data, and everything I'm like recording. But yeah, no, I I, I, I mean, definitely. See I it. think it's a really cool idea. It is. That's what I mean. I mean, obviously, it's been around for a while since I had like spy glasses when I was a little kid. Yeah, but that's I mean, what they were I'm very saying. chunky, and they were, you know, they had like, a huge I mean. camera. Like, they if you make it see. small, if you make it fashionable, and you make it like not also that much the, different you know, from Ray-Ban, a regular yeah. Ray Ray Ban's glasses, then that's when people start to adopt because it's not that weird. Maybe, maybe. And we'll, then again, we'll see. then again, we'll Snapchat, see how this gets Snapchat also tried doing this. They had Snapchat glasses a long time ago, and Snapchat those failed. glasses. Yeah. Why? But they had more limited functionality. They were like, because people record stuff on Snapchat. So, like, people will be, like, turning on their little glasses, recording stuff, and then they'll send it straight into, like, Snapchat on their stories or whatever. But I feel like Snapchat, I feel like a lot of people just do, like, selfies and stuff, right? Mm, not really. So, like, could you really do a selfie with I, the glasses? I, well, most of the people that I have on Snapchat don't do selfies. They use the back of their phone camera. Oh. Okay. So yeah. Maybe I haven't really used Snapchat enough to maybe to say how to use. I don't know. I just remember when I briefly used it at one point. I feel like people were sending like selfies, or they were sending out like really weird or like blurred out or like blacked out backgrounds, and then just like text. Okay. You know what I mean? They okay. say like uh, I don't know. You okay. know, what's I, up? Or like I don't, I don't know. know this some, is, some random like. This is this is just my my sentence. my thing. I barely use Snapchat. I think Snapchat is like kind of dumb. Everything, Explain. everything that I've seen people post on Snapchat is so dumb and like irrelevant. I mean, you could argue that's most social media. Yeah, but at the very least, on my Instagram, because that's the thing with like Snapchat, there aren't any big creators on Snapchat that you can like go and look at their stories, and the stories that they do put are like the most low effort things I've ever seen in my entire life. Uh, because what Snapchat, Snapchat is dying right now. I don't know if you knew. I mean, I don't really know okay. people who are using it as much. Snapchat is dying. They're basically paying creators to be on their site and then post a whole bunch of stuff. They're paying creators? Yeah. Oh, they're desperate. A good, yeah, that's what I mean. A good amount of money, too. And so creators just have a quota. They're like, oh, post like 100 things per day. But it's literally like the most useless. And so they'll be taking like pictures of the ground and just like <laughs> 10 pictures of the exact same thing with slightly different angles just so they fill their quota. So that's what I mean. It's like very okay. low so effort. So it's just full of like spam basically. Basically. So that's what I mean. Like Snapchat to me right now is like the most useless social media that I have. At the very least on Instagram, I'm able to see people that like edit video, edit photos and like do tutorials and do all this stuff. And it's like more high effort and high quality stuff or like nice photography. You're not going to see nice photography in Snapchat. You're not going to see nice video editing in Snapchat. So to me, it's the most useless right now. Are there, like, any new, like, social media apps that have kind of come out that people are starting to use? No. And actually, going back to the topic of boring innovation. <laughs> that, that, that's kind <laughs> which, of which is the original, Which is the original one. Um, no, all the social medias, I think, at this point are just kind of copying each other. And, again, that's sort of, like, what makes it boring. There's... Oh, I know a boring innovation. Oh, do you want to go? No, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I'll, no, I'll, I'll say it after. I'll say it after. All I was going to say is that, like, every social media now is just copying each other to the point where there is no – Wow, factor. That, that's actually pretty much what I was gonna say. Because yeah. like, Instagram used to be that the only place where you have to like for posting something you have to have a picture, so a lot of people use it for photography or whatever, and it gave it a little bit more of an intimate moment rather than just like text, which is what Twitter does. But then Twitter now has photo and video. Yeah. Snapchat now has. Wait, did Twitter just used to be just text? Uh, a long time ago, yeah. Oh. Then they slowly added like pictures and videos. So was Instagram kind of the first? No, it couldn't no, have it was been the Facebook. first. Facebook, it was Facebook was the worst to add like photos and videos and stuff. Okay, but in Facebook you had this this uh, combination of the two, where you could do just uh, text based posts, or you could do text based and photo. But then photo was kind of like the side content to the to the text post, whereas on Instagram the photo is the main. Got it. Subject yeah. that you're sharing. And then maybe a little caption. Like nobody – do you really read the caption when you go on Instagram and look at like most posts? It's, really. it's a picture, right? You look at the image. Yeah, you, you look, look at, at the like picture, the, the flash video stuff. or whatever. Yeah. But in, in – and you can kind of tell what the focus is on the social medias by where they place the, the content. So on Facebook, the text goes first and then the image or the videos. Whereas on Instagram, the video is the main thing. And then under it is the captions and the comments and stuff like that. Yeah, so the main focus like, is the picture on Instagram. 
Yeah, I mean that reminds me of like LinkedIn, where the text is the main yeah exactly thing because like you see the text first and then the and con- then you see the photo. You literally have to like so it forces you to read. Click see more and then yeah exactly it forces you to read, yeah. which I think makes sense given its purpose because it's more of like mm-hmm. a professional communication platform yeah and networking platform where it's like you're trying to like spread good ideas or like i mean most of what i consume on linkedin is like how to maximize productivity or yeah. like you know reading up on like companies different updates of like oh we just launched a new drug or we launched a new product or whatever honestly to me or stuff like that probably out of them out of all of them aside from maybe snapchat linkedin is like if you even want to call it a social media i don't use it it's so useless to me i like it Really, I like LinkedIn. Yeah, because uh-huh. I I feel like that's the most useful and like practical information you're gonna get. Like Instagram and like YouTube. You, I mean, YouTube Shorts are my my big enemy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I spend yeah. way too much time on YouTube Shorts. Yeah. That's like my Instagram. Because like as you know, I have the limit on my Instagram account, but not on my YouTube. Yeah. So really, my YouTube has become like Instagram. Your main, yeah. Where I'm just like going through videos nonstop. But I mean, would you would you consider because YouTube Shorts is clearly like a copy of TikTok, kind of TikTok, but it also like TikTok. Instagram, because like Instagram has those like what is it called Reels, which are typically they have like reels, shorter. But then Reels are a copy from TikTok. Are those so? TikTok was the original, was the like original short, well, very short form. Technically, it was Vine. I was gonna say Vine. Originally, it started with Vine, then it died. Oh, Musically. Musically was the I second. I remember that. And then the guts of Musically were used to make TikTok. Interesting. Was Musical.ly also like a Chinese-based company? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Okay. I think so. Interesting. Because then they bought Musical.ly and then they changed it to TikTok. Wait, so TikTok came from Musical.ly? Yeah. Musical.ly is no more. Like if you try and search it on the App Store, it's not it's not a thing anymore. Is it the same company? Yeah. I forget. What, what is the... It's something Byte, right? Byte Dance. Byte Dance, yeah. Um, well, they bought it, so... I didn't realize that. Yeah. I didn't know TikTok. So, okay. So Instagram copied TikTok. So th- see, this is, this, this to me is kind of boring innovation. It is. It's very much. I don't boring. even know if I call it innovation. Honestly, it's just copying Bo- other people. It's just, but which is boring because you get the same thing. Like there's no defining factor for any of these social medias. Like sure. There may be some, but at the end of the day, they all kind of do the same thing. So you could theoretically just be on one and not be on the others and be kind of fine. Um, but what I'd like to see, especially if we're just talking about innovation, is just like do something fun, like do something interesting, like have some sort of a gimmick. The reason why a lot of people do the whole like be real, I don't know if you ever heard of it. Like, yeah, be, be real. real. Yeah, yeah. It, the whole point is that you get a you get a very short period of time in the day through which you can post, and technically, you know, it's you still have the same picture. Like you can technically upload that picture to other social medias. Like, but the the cool part about it to me is that there's some there's a gimmick. There's uh. There's a limit. There's something there that stops you from making it like every other social media. And to me, that's what's cool about it. Like, even if you have the same basic ingredients for a social media, if you add a sprinkle of something in here or there, that makes it into a whole new recipe. And to me, that's what innovation is. Like, just changing the formula up. And that's also why I think phones are boring because they're all kind of the same thing. We have, and that's why I personally think that folding for really cool and all the old phones that just did wild stuff, uh, which is also why I'll criticize Apple right now for their uh, their new Apple Pencil design, which is horrible. Like, it's it's cheaper, and it's USB-C, which is kind of cool, but then, like, it doesn't have pressure sensitivity. Like, what's the point? Like, I saw a LinkedIn post of somebody that apparently designed it or helped design it. And they were like, oh, I'm so proud of it. And, like, it's so cool. Like... I'm not going to rain down on your party. All I'm going to say is that as a consumer, that Apple Pencil is just like, it's not it. It's not it. I'm sorry. I It's not trying to be mean, but like that Apple Pencil is not it in my opinion. So why why did they come up with this new design? Like what Because was the their point? new iPads are now all USB-C. Oh, just the compatibility? Yeah, because the old, the very first gen Apple Pencil was is um, lightning, I'm pretty sure. So why couldn't they add the pressure setting or whatever? They just wanted to make it cheaper, I guess. So it's just it's just to make it cheaper. I'm assuming. So it has less less features, but it's a compatibility, and then the price point yeah. is better. But then pressure sensitivity, hmm. like if you're drawing, you need pressure sensitivity. So the, actually, the functionality is lower. Yeah. For this device, it's yeah, it's the cheapest device, and it also has the least functionality out of the other two Apple pencils. 
Huh. And it came out this year. And then it's crazy. So they're going back in time. That's what I'm saying. Okay. They're actually yes, doing the, the yes, opposite. Okay. Yes, it's cheaper. But then, like, you, how long did the first Apple Pencil... When did the first Apple Pencil came out? come out? Actually, I don't know. I actually this. don't know. I'll search this up right now. Um, It came out a while ago. So, okay. So when did the first Apple Pencil come out? So the first Apple, Be- Apple Pencil came out in 2015. It's eight been years. eight years. And you're telling me... The newest Apple Pencil, which is, yes, technically cheaper than this one, but it's been eight years after the first one came out, has less features. That's that's kind of sad, actually. That's rough. That is rough. I'm sorry. I don't think it's a very good deal, in my opinion. I'm sorry. See, this is a... This you is can a... get another stylus, bro. Just buy another stylus. A lot of other companies just make styluses for iPads that work about the same for way less. Just buy another thing. It's so useless. It's so useless. I mean, that, that's just what Apple does, though. And is that's it just, why I have a problem with it. That's Apple. that's why like the word innovation with Apple, I just like I don't know if I can I, I don't know if I can call what they do innovation. To me, it's really corporate greed. Like it's them coming up with It's corporate innovation. How about how about we call it that? Corporate innovation. That's no, okay. We're not small it they're, they're small steps that are very safe on their shareholders and like most populations. They know they'll sell something, so they do it. Yeah, because people buy risky. stuff. Buy, people buy their stuff. Exactly. They don't want to be risky about it. They want to play it safe. I mean, the Apple Pencil thing, I don't know if I would say that's risky, it's but that's definitely... Not. Remember the, the cannibalization stuff we are talking about? Yeah. Of like, you know, a product basically... Like a new product coming out that basically can like hurt the sales of... Other products. Other products. So like with this with new Apple line. Pencil... Maybe you gain some customers at the very low end. At the very low end, who want just a cheaper pencil, they don't care so much about like, oh, it has to be the perfect functionality. I guess. But then you lose all the people who are like artists or whatever, who are like drawing on their iPads, and they don't have the pressure sensitivity or whatever, and they're like, well, I'm not going to use this. Yeah, so they'll just go up to the. I mean, so they'll go somewhere else. Honestly, like if you're an artist and you're really using like an iPad or something, you already probably have an iPad that is one Type C. And two uses the, like the second gen Apple Pencil, which is like wirelessly charged. Like it's just one thing. Uh, I don't know. I really don't know why they made this. Like I'm pretty sure even if you go to like Apple's site, um, Logitech, they had like a Logitech crayon, they called it, which is like Logitech, which is another tech company. They made like an Apple Pencil-esque thing that was basically like a stylus for the, the iPad, which did not have pressure sensitivity. And it was like $40 or like $50. So that's what I'm saying. People will buy that. Instead of the Apple's own thing. Yeah, Apple. It's so, so it's so useless. It's so useless. Like the only good thing about the other Apple pencils is that you had more functionality where that you couldn't get elsewhere. Well, I feel like people like to stay within brand. So it's like if you have one Apple okay, thing, it's I have, like I have, you want the I other Apple issues, thing. I have issues with those people. I mean, it's just it's just psychology. You know, it's like, oh, I have it the Apple is. iPad, I have the iPhone. It's yeah. like, I might as well get the Apple Pencil, uh, like complete the set. I get it. The you Apple, know what I mean? Not the, get this Logitech. The ecosystem know. is very tempting, I will say. But again, like Apple is just, it, they used to be really innovative. They used to push the boundaries. They're not really not doing that anymore. No. And that's kind of what I hate. As somebody that like is a tech enthusiast, I love seeing new products, like cool concepts. There, like even with TVs and stuff, there was a there, I don't remember the brand exactly, um, but maybe it was Samsung. I don't know. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, of like a brand of monitor that was flat, but it had handles on the sides, and if you really wanted to, you could bend it. Uh, and it was designed to could be bent. Bend a TV. It was designed to be bent. That's crazy. Uh, so that now you have like a little curve, because you know how you have like curved monitors. Yeah. So that you could go from curved to flat whenever you wanted, and like. Sure, that's kind of useless. It's a useless gimmick, but at the very least, it's new. Like, it's different. You're doing something. And to me, that's exciting. Even if it doesn't take off, maybe that is the concept for something else in the future, which I personally think is the cool part, not just, like, incrementally building it. And then again, I I will say there are some people that appreciate the incremental builds. A lot of people talk about uh, Porsche. You probably know the car brand, Porsche. So they have their, their Porsche, like, 911 which is like their car. The formula for that car, if you look at like a Porsche 911 20 years ago, it looks almost the exact same as a Porsche 911 that came out this year. The brand is almost unchanging for that specific model of car. But a lot of people appreciate the the build of the car because you kind of start noticing these big changes 10 years, 20 years in the future. 
So some people appreciate like the build of the brand, the incremental uh, build. But to a degree, at least in the tech space where everything is moving, like cars don't move that fast if we're talking about innovation. Every other piece of technology, consumer electronics, they do very fast. Like 4K came out, like uh, 1080p came out, then 4K came out. Now there's 8K TVs. Now there's like probably more than that now uh, nowadays, right? Like we're moving so fast that if you're doing these little incremental changes, like sure, they're compound over years, but it's not exciting. Like it's not, it's not flashy. I want flashy. Even if it's just for the cool factor, I want flashy. Even if it's useless and it doesn't sell well. And I know that companies want to make money, so they probably won't go with that. But like to me, it gives me hope about like some cool thing. Because, like, the folding phones that we have now, they were wacky when it, they first came out. Like, nobody, everybody was like, oh, well, why would you want a folding phone? Like, that's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of, ew. But then it, they caught on, and now a lot of companies are starting to do folding phones, right? So it literally just takes that one company to do something kind of okay for everybody else to follow and make something, like, unique. So, yeah, that's a great point. So that's, I don't know, that's, that's my opinion on that. I don't know if you have any other, like, um, any other, like, examples of technology that is like incremental and you kind of think it's like oh why can't they do something like more interesting um i don't know i feel i feel like most companies nowadays especially big ones like apple who are basically just trying to make shareholders happy and like not take like too big of risks because they want to maintain their core business are more risk averse and you know just basically trying to make little changes, like you said, incremental changes, and then like introducing like minimally better products just so people are like, oh, you know, it's a little bit better. I'll buy it, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then it's also the, you know, you kind of have to buy the new thing at some point because, you know, otherwise your previous device is just kind of give up. And honestly, even speaking of that, I think another thing that a lot of people aren't seeing, but it's starting to come out. And this has been proven by Apple's uh, like earnings in the last few, like, what is it, quarters? Last few quarters is because their phones, their phones are getting really good. Like, the performance that you get out of an iPhone is really good. And even though they're doing these incremental changes, the fact that they aren't changing that much from year to year means that realistically you can buy a phone. And maybe before it used to be, like, three years and then you change phones. Now it's, like, five years and then you change phones. So Apple's revenue in terms of, like, iPhones has kind of decreased over the years. I don't know if I would say because five last... years is true because I know people who buy the new phone like every no, year. No, 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 yeah, yeah, but most people don't. So you think that people are on average buying a new phone less often? Less often because they're getting better. Mm. They don't have to change it. Like you, it used to be that like, oh, my phone is getting laggy. I need to get another one. I'd like to see the stats on this. Really? I don't know if I, I don't know if I believe that. Literally, Apple <laughs> Apple's revenue has decreased compared to like other years. They've sold less new iphones so you think that's because people are holding on to their current iphones longer okay that could be because again what other reason do you think there would be for iphone for apple to be buy to be selling less in terms of numbers it less could just be price units, less units it could just be price people are just not willing to pay but I, the price anymore but then again if they have to buy a new iphone they have to fork up the price yeah that's true so in that sense, people are, one, holding on to their phones, and two, being like, I can still hold on to the phone. Because if they couldn't, they'd have no other choice. They have to buy another phone. That's true, actually. Okay. I Okay, I can I can see that. Right? I can see that. Like, if it's good, if, if – because, okay, maybe this – again, it might just be me, and it might just be me being poor or whatever. But I, I buy a phone, and I want to maximize the amount of time I have with it until I buy another one. So if I know that a phone is going to last me five years, I'm not going to buy a phone immediately – the next year or the next yeah, two yeah. years, I'm going to hold on yeah. to it until I'm like, okay, it's ready for an upgrade. Like this thing is laggy. I can't really use it at the current capacity anymore. So the better you make your devices technically, and the longer they last, the longer they stay relevant, the less likely those customers that just bought a phone, they're like, they're less likely to buy the next phone that comes out like the next year's phone. Cause the, the, the increase is negligible unless you make a shiny new feature that literally that phone doesn't have. Yeah, and, that's a good point. And the feature has to be important enough. Like, you can't just be like, oh, yeah, we added another camera. It's better, kind of. Like, it has to be enough to where people feel the change, and they feel like they need the change in their current smartphone. So yeah. That's my that's my idea. Definitely. So, which I guess, in a way, it's harder for companies to do this, 
but it gives them a little bit more incentive of like if we have something that is so revolutionary that people can't live without in the next generation of phone it doesn't matter if they bought last year's phone they're gonna want this year's phone i'm just saying i'm just saying i'm just saying well i'm gonna open it up to the listeners because i'm I'm, I'm curious what you guys think. So if you're watching this on YouTube, I want you to give a comment down below and say, what is a boring innovation? Or maybe what is an idea you have for how companies can be more innovative, kind of escape? Well, I don't know if companies will ever escape their greed or their corporate greed or corporate innovation, whatever you want to call it. Um, but yeah, I'd love to hear you know your thoughts. So if you're on, on YouTube, you know, obviously hit a like, give us a follow, but you know, comment down below what you think. If you're listening to this on Spotify, um, I'll add a feature. There's like a new option, a new thing on Spotify where like I can add a question. Oh, add a question. Nice. So either way, would love for you to interact with this episode. Uh, I think it's a super important topic. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed and uh, we'll see you on the next one. All right. Bye. See ya.